Hi everyone, I thought it would just come on. I'm glued to the TV like the rest of you. And I think there are some really important questions that you can all ask yourselves, particularly if you're people that are interested in HCRV and you are trying to learn HCRV. One of the things we do is that we will pick a target and then we will try to figure out how the target wound up where they wound up. We'll work backwards. This is one of the te techniques we teach is, is how to go backwards. So how'd the documents get there in the first place? How did the doc, how did the, all of these documents wind up at Mar-a-Lago? So what it looks like is that part of what happened is that on the weekends, this is what I can find out so far for, uh, uh, on the weekends when the president would go to Mar-a-Lago, he would be giving, given notes. Sometimes they would be briefing notes, etc. cetera. Um, he would take a bunch of stuff with him. Some of that probably uh, fell under the category of classified information. So every time he took a packet of material with him to Mar-a-Lago over the weekend, he was supposed to look at it I don't under, the thing that people are going to want to know is from the time he left Air Force One with that material and then took it to Mar-a-Lago and then maybe what, looked at it in his bedroom, tossed it somewhere, and then over months and months and months, these notes and this presidential, <laughs> papers that he was supposed to be looking at accumulated at Mar-a-Lago. So here's, that's part of the problem. Part of the problem is that he was able to take large amounts of these documents with him to Mar-a-Lago and work from Mar-a-Lago or say he was going to go spend some time there. And that's how the documents accumulated slowly over time at that location. Which means that the New Jersey location, anywhere that he was going, where theoretically he was taking uh, documents, should probably be looked at. Which brings us back to the casket people had asked about. Did he uh, take, you know, 12 boxes of some of the stuff he had collected when he had gone to New Jersey over the weekend? Uh, his... Um, his summer palace and uh, oopsie daisy and decide to disclose of it. I don't know if it was anything quite like that, but I would not be surprised if we saw another raid. So the question is, who in security dropped the ball to allow him to take this level of high security information with him to Mar-a-Lago on the weekends and then not return it? So his ability to do that is is probably going to see it's getting hot in here, right? It goes back to that August energy where the the intelligence agencies are on the fire. In the end, it always ends the same way. And that is that the intelligence agencies are going to be called before the American people and they're going to have to explain how a Russian operative walked into the front of the White House. Why wasn't this individual, when you knew he was a criminal, when, when he was being investigated, when there were FBI investigations about him being involved with Epstein's pedophile ring, when there were questions about the Trump modeling world, I don't understand why this guy was a, a kept slipping through the cracks and literally somebody with this portfolio was allowed to walk through uh, the, the front door. And I just keep going back to those early remotes that Robert Mueller showed us, that he was going to take this investigation to the Capitol steps and expose everybody who was bribed. This is, this is how we lost our country. We lost our country with one bribe, one compromised person at a time. And if we don't aggressively call it out, then our democracy will be gone.
All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.